it's been a fall and fall, not just in stock markets. The rupee has taken, well, today a breather after hitting fresh all-time lows nearly every day since the Trump election. However, the rupee is actually a picture of strength when you compare it with most Asian currencies, which have been falling much more. While the Indian currency is down 0.38% in the month of November versus the dollar, the renminbi for this month is down 1.5%, yen is down one7 Korean won is down 2.5% and the Thai baht is down 2.9% versus the dollar. And that's because the dollar index is up 2% in the month of November from 103.8 to 106. That explains much of the fall. But where do we go from here? Joining me are two absolute experts on the field. Uh, we have uh, B. Prasanna, the head of global markets at ICICI Bank and Aru Prakshit, Group Head Treasury Sales and Analytics at HDFC Bank. Aru Prasanna, thank you very much indeed for sparing time in what must be busy days, busy hours uh, in your treasury desk. Aru, what is your uh, uh, view? Do you think we see this uh, continued pressure? Are we stopping at 84.4? Uh, or do you think, uh, you know, 85 is very much on the horizon? Uh, thanks, Lata. Good morning. Uh no, I think 85 is very much uh, is possible. Uh, so we, uh, if I have to put a number, I would think it will be an 82, 20, 84, 20, 85 kind of a range, which is likely to happen in the next uh, three or two, six odd months. Mm -hmm. And if uh, one was to extend the timelines, it can go up to 85, 50. 85 is not a barrier that can't be breached. But what we are likely to see is a lot more volatility in the days to come. Unlike what we have seen in the last uh, couple of years, mm. rupee will remain volatile. Within, maybe within the range, but it will remain volatile. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, volatility in all markets. As we speak, the Nifty has breached uh, the uh, 23, 24,000 mark and, uh, you know, 23,600 or 23,700 also breached. Uh, Prasanna, what's your sense? What is the range that we should look at now for the rupee? Uh, uh, good morning, Lata. And uh, I think uh, uh, more than a particular level of the rupee, I think we need to come to terms with the fact that after a long, long time, uh, uh, it's actually the strong dollar and the tremendous uh, redistribution of uh, the rest of the world growth into the U.S. growth, which is what has been happening, uh, driven uh, post uh, the Trump elections and the expectations of his policies. So I think we need to understand that what what was to, what could have turned out to be a very positive uh, period for emerging markets because the Fed was starting to cut rates, mm. and in that is that scenario, you would have had a middling kind of a U.S. growth, but you would have had a very strong EM growth, and there would be search for yields, and people will come into EM. So that was the situation maybe around 30 days ago or 45 days ago. But the election uh, results and the red sweep, not just Trump's election, but the fact that he's got both the houses as well, has made it very clear that it's the post uh, po uh, pro-US growth policy which is going to uh, you know, form the basis of everything that's going to happen. So it's going to be a slightly uh, a dark uh, period for emerging markets overall. And within emerging markets, though India is one of the stars and doing pretty well, uh, the fact of the matter is when the money itself is returning back to the U.S. Uh, from a dollar strength perspective, it's very difficult for uh, emerging market currencies to, you know, stand against it. So what we are seeing is that, uh, like you mentioned in your initial uh, commentary, almost all emerging market currencies are weakening. And it's only because of the RBI that, uh, you know, uh, the the rupee is actually weakened a little less. And you would see that almost on a daily basis, there have been substantial outflows on the equity market. It's been compensated only by the Reserve Bank intervention. Oh, yes. Your point on uh, U.S. exceptionalism uh, is well taken. Uh, we are seeing these outflows uh, uh, from the equity markets, and I think that continues even today. Uh, but uh, Arup... Uh, this is all in anticipation of what uh, the uh, Trump administration will do. And we, the actual steps will come after January 20th. So would there be a nastier fall after Jan 20th? I mean, should we be prepared for a worse first calendar quarter of 25? So interesting question, because uh, this is all in anticipation of what Trump is likely to do. The mm. issue is, will Trump go the whole hog or will there be a lot more different Trump, or a lot more diplomatic Trump in a 2.0. Uh, but the other fact is that there's a lot of money which uh, was rumored to have moved out of the equity markets into China, emerging equity markets into China, including India. 
Now, if Trump becomes that level of aggression, then there would be some amount of that money also flowing back into some of the other countries and most probably India will stand to benefit. Uh, if I have to look at a Trump 1.0, the rupee mm. had depreciated by about 11 to 12 percent in that four-year period. Uh, I would hazard a guess it will be more to set 6 to 7 percent or 7 to 8 percent kind of a thing in this four-year period. So if one was to break it up, it's a little different, uh, about one or two odd percent a year. The other fact is that India's macro is much better this time than the 16 to 20 phase of uh, Trump 1.0. With uh, the kind of uh, export surge which is coming from the GCC side, there, I don't see it a one-way traffic of a huge fall. But as I said, within volatility, it will remain. And obviously, uh, the, what we have seen is the, uh, the, the trajectory of depreciation seems to be a lot more... Uh, smoothened out by the way uh, uh, Central Bank has looked at it. And while RBI will allow some amount of uh, fall to happen, I don't see it uh, to be remaining uh, beyond uh, uh, expectations of a fall kind of a thing. So I don't see out of the whack, but yes, we mm. should need to be careful. No, your 85 perhaps captures all that. Uh, and, and well, as for the macros, yes, almost every brokerage under the sun has said that India is least affected, more in terms of even exposure uh, to uh, the U uh, United States in terms of exports. But uh, about our macros, the last two numbers are a little troubling. Uh, inflation is higher than expected. Growth is going to be lower than expected when it comes uh, on November 29th. But, Prasanna, now before I come to that part, the inflation part, uh, the Reserve Bank, when it uh, supplies so much of dollars, is, could also be absorbing uh, rupees from the system. Is there a worry of that kind of monetary liquidity tightness uh, a fear which had gone away in the last few months? Uh, so, Lata, excellent question. Uh, just before that, one point which I wanted to, you know, make about is when we're discussing the global strength of the dollar, I think the single most important thing that is affecting India and the Indian rupee is uh, what is it doing to the Chinese yuan? And mm. China being at the forefront of Trump's policy in terms of tariff, we should re uh, realize that uh, they are just about to uh, devalue a little bit. I mean, depending upon when the announcement uh, comes and to the extent to which tariff happens, there is going to be a devaluation or a depreciation, uh, as you will call, on the Chinese yuan. And that's one of the reasons why you could assume that even as the RBI intervenes and kind of prevents a runaway depreciation of the rupee, if you have noticed, they have been consistently uh, leading the rates up a little bit. At present, the INR has been depreciating a little bit over over the last, uh, uh, say, one month or so. And the primary reason is there is a big fear of what's going to happen to uh, the Chinese yuan. Mm -hmm. And because if that devalues or depreciates, uh, I mean, I think INR has no other scope, but in order to retain competitiveness, we have to depreciate as well. Now, uh, to answer your question on liquidity, I think uh, the broad uh, way in which RBI has been intervening in the last uh, one month or so is, I would put it like, a, a, I mean, there are no proper estimates on their intervention in the NDF market, but uh, uh, it, I would put it as onshore, maybe around 20, 30% and 60, 70% on the NDF market. And interestingly, what they do on the NDF market is uh, you would call it like a bet on uh, on the exchange rate rather than actual uh, deliverable uh, dollars. So to that extent, it's only when you actually give delivery of dollars, the rupee liquidity gets absorbed. So to the extent that they have an onshore forward outstanding, uh, when they take delivery or when they give delivery of that, there will be a withdrawal of liquidity, uh, which I think is to the extent of 15 to 20 billion dollars. But I don't see them taking giving delivery of that dollar. They are probably going to keep it uh, uh, outstanding. And they will probably, when they come to a sweet spot, when flows are coming in, they will use that opportunity to recover the dollars. But what they are having as an outstanding on the NDF, uh, it does not lead to an immediate uh, uh, liquidity withdrawal from the system unless there are uh, arbitrage uh, plays that have been played by the Indian banking system when RBI has shorted a uh, dollar on the NDF and the Indian banks have come and, you know, uh, uh, played the arbitrage route. So it's a difficult call to take as to what that estimate is. But I would say that uh, most of the intervention is now happening on the NDF side and most of that intervention does not have an immediate liquidity implication is what I would presume. Okay. I am being warned that I am out of time. So the last two quick questions to both of you. Please make it quick. Uh, Prasanna, we saw the ugly uh, inflation number. What does the Reserve Bank do? Uh, when is your first rate cut expectation? So 
I think uh, we are in a situation where the RBI is likely to revise growth lower and uh, probably revise inflation higher by maybe 20 basis points or so. And the fact that the global environment is now leading to a weaker uh, rupee and a stronger dollar means that the case for a rate cut is not uh, as clear as it was earlier. Earlier, we had a call of uh, February. Now, it definitely looks like uh, uh, there is a possibility of that getting postponed to April. What about you, Aru? Q1 uh, next fisc. Okay, so that I could be either the Fed. Fed. It's unlikely Fed or... to happen. Okay, certainly not very quickly, uh, Arup. Uh, do you think Indian companies are prepared for this rupee depreciation? Because uh, you know the RBI was being your kind of treasury manager by managing the volatility. Will it show in the Q3 balance sheets that people didn't manage their currency risk well? Uh, good question. See, but. Uh... There has been, a, I mean, a complacency at the level of the uh, Indian corporates. But if the depreciation remains within that one to one and a half percent from here on, I don't think that should impact too much. Okay. okay. So okay. Unless it's too wide, it should not. Okay. All right. I'm going to invite both of you all yet again for a longer show. But at the moment, Swiggy is listed. So that's the big thing on the other side of the break. Uh, thank you very much, Prasanna and Arup, for sparing time for us. A quick break, but don't go anywhere. Chartbuster starts with the Swiggy manager.